Hello everybody, welcome to another exciting new player guide here at Playing Board Games. Uh, with these new player guides, Travis has built a deck wow. using just the revised core set and the Scarlet Keys box, which is the expansion that Vincent Lee, the investigator we're talking about today, came from. And uh, these decks were built with the limited collection in mind to help new players, if you're just starting out, to kind of just like say, what should I do with this character? And spoiler alert, there's a lot you can do with this character. We're going to be talking about yeah. this deck and then pieces of potential other decks. Also because Travis really likes this deck building style. Yeah. like that. That's part of it too. Uh, this deck is built without the taboo list in mind. You might have heard about the taboo list as a new player. Just ignore it. Uh, play with the cards as printed for as long as you want to. Because honestly, at this point now, the taboo list has so many buffs and nerfs that it's kind of just like, you know, pick how you want to play Arkham. Uh, Vincent Lee... Let's get to the doctor himself. 3-4-3-1 three, three, stat line. 9-6 uh, for Soak. And as a reaction, after one of your card effects heals damage from an investigator or an investigator's ally asset, add one of your set-aside on the mend skills to that investigator's hand. On the mend, as you can see just a little bit below Vincent Lee, is a skill that has limit one on, on the mend in your hand. Commit only to a test you're performing. When on the mend would be discarded from anywhere, set it aside out of play instead. It is uh, commits for two wild. So when you heal somebody or somebody's ally, they get basically just an unexpected courage, a one use unexpected courage into their hand. Mm -hmm. uh, his Elder Sign effect is plus one. You may heal one damage from an investigator or ally asset your location. That would then also say, hey, get an unexpected courage. Uh, Vincent's deck building is 30 cards, and it's there's there's a lot here. So let's just take that magnifying glass up to our screen and give it a little bit of a read. Seeker cards 0 to 3, neutral 0 to 5, cards that heal damage, level 0 to 5, up to 15 other guardian and or survivor cards 0 yeah. 1, which is yeah where the, the real fun starts to get in. And then also just like cards that heal damage, because as you can see on the deck list, we actually have a mystic card in here as well. Yeah, Arkham DV will tell you that's not a legal card. But yes. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they're lying. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, your deck building is Bone Saw, which is his signature asset. It's a three cost item tool melee that takes up your hand slot. As an action, you can fight and you get plus two fist for this attack. If this attack is successful, you may take one damage to deal plus one damage for this attack. Uh, this is a very nice, very nice weapon to start out with because it gives you plus two and it deals plus one damage only if you want it to. Which then has some synergy because you allow yourself to heal yourself and then get an unexpected courage out of it. It also has the action, heal five damage from an investigator location, test book four. If you fail, that investigator suffers one physical trauma. Trauma is damage that uh, you start with when you begin a scenario. This sounds scary, but one thing that this actually does for Vincent is it allows him to start putting on the mends into people's hands as early as turn one. So I think you should perform surgery on your friends because it's actually beneficial to you in the long run. Especially if it's unnecessary. Especially if it's unnecessary. They don't have to have five damage on them for they do this. No, they don't have to have eight have, damage. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah they, you could just do it. Turn one, play bone saw, operate on you. <laughs> and fail. Yeah. Oh, You're shucks. just like, oh, don't worry. I put you back together a little bit, but uh, I'm pretty sure one of these kidneys was supposed to go back in there, too. <laughs> ah, it'll be fine. Was <laughs> is that one of my kidneys? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Vincent Lee's signature weakness is Wounded Bystander. It's uh, it's an ally that comes into play, so he's going to crane my head past this camera <laughs> I have in the way. Uh, it comes into play with three damage on it. It cannot leave play while it has damage. It has five total soak on it. When you take non-direct damage, at least one of it must be assigned to Wounded Bystander if able. If he is defeated, you suffer one mental trauma. So there's a lot of cool stuff about this card. Number one, you can actually turn it into a positive. Yeah. Because... Those are the best weaknesses. Yeah, because it is um, an ally asset at your location. Mm-hmm. Right? So, you know... And it's in your play area as well. So, you know, it's an it's an ally that, you know, it's one of your yeah, allies. It doesn't assets. go into your threat area. Yeah, it goes into your play area. Which means that if you heal, uh, I'm pretty sure if you heal Wounded Bystander, you get an on the man from that. I also think so. Yeah, also pretty confident. Yeah. Which means that, like, you could, you could heal this guy out of here, right? However, you could also just, like, leave it with one damage and then just have it be soak for you. And then you heal it up and you're like, it's all good. This could have the chance of going wrong and dealing you mental trauma, but here's a little secret that the people at FFG aren't going to tell you. Most cards that heal damage also heal horror. Yep. So, like... <laughs> 
That's kind of sick. I thought you were going to say most cards to heal damage are bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, because as, as we know with Vincent Lee, uh, they, it's actually without how healing has been and also Vincent Lee, they get better, right? Healing yeah. medical techs yeah. the first stage, right? Yeah, classics. Uh, Travis. I oh, think it's a shame that this guy doesn't take up the ally slot. Like, just show up and push your ally out of the way. Like, I'm bleeding. <laughs> I think it, I think it should have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everyone also says in chat that he looks like me when I had, like, the big hair and the mustache, which is 100% the truth. Yeah, yeah. And they also say that you kind of look like Vincent Lee, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you want to cut me open <laughs> on for Always. a video? Let's yeah. do it. And then Bryn's Will York. He can bury me once it goes wrong. Amateur <laughs> <laughs> surgery hour. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot we can talk about for uh, Vincent Lee, but I think the best thing that we can really get into it is when we start looking at the individual cards, because that's where a lot of the dialogue comes from. So Travis, I'm going to pass this to you first. Yeah, so there's a lot of different things you can do with Vincent Lee with the cards available to you, and depending on what other investigators people are playing um, for your card pool. Is that kind of money? <laughs> no, it's not. That's Charlie Kane in, in his disguise. But it could be Charlie Kane in yeah. his disguise, too. <laughs> Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the deck that I got built here is like a, a clue getting support healing sort of mm -hmm. deck. Mm -hmm. um, we'll talk about the other options after. But uh, we have my good friend Dr. Milan Christopher. He gives you plus one book, pushing you up to a very comfortable five. As a reaction after you successfully investigate, you gain a resource and he can soak a damage into horror for you. Mm -hmm. Good card. Um, he'll get you lots of money. Mm -hmm. It's always good. Yeah, money's great. Yeah. Uh, we got a couple of red cards here. We got our look what I found, which after you fail a test while by two or less while investigating, you get to discover two clues to your location. Um, you're not going to be passing all of your tests, and you like a little bit of help because your four book isn't, even with base five with uh, Dr. Milan, is not like super impressive. Mm -hmm. It's just comfortable. Same thing with Lucky. One fast play when you fail a skill test, you get to plus two your skill value for that test. Um, this is a really good card to play on a different test immediately after you fail doing surgery on your friends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And <laughs> to get a clue or something dumb. Yeah, thank yeah. God it didn't stub my toe. I'm lucky. It's like Finn's like... <laughs> yeah, we got working on she has commits for... It's a pretty flexible card for Vincent. You can just play it to get a clue at your location if the shroud's too high for you, or you can commit for two books. Yep. All right, Bren, you win the That's guts lottery today. Sick. <laughs> All right, well, firstly, we got the deduction here, which uh, it's like a vicious blow for clues. And uh, if you're wondering what a vicious blow does, I'm going to tell you that it's like a deduction for damage. Yeah. Um, and I'm not really going to get into it too much more. It's just good. If you're trying it's to get clues, good. you should play yeah. with this card. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, then we have guts which is quietly one of the best colorless cards in the game. You're going to try to do stuff with your other numbers that aren't a one, like your punch and your book, which leaves us with this brain number that we kind of mostly don't really use. But the game is going to attack us by asking us to make brain tests, and if we fail, bad things will happen, which admittedly sometimes might not actually be that bad because, you know, like... We're literally a doctor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but sometimes it's just better to not have to think about that. This gives you plus two, putting you up to a fairly comfortable five. Should be able to pass most tests. Uh, the notable one is always frozen in fear. Yeah. You will likely not win a game if you are sitting there with a frozen in fear every turn after turn, you know, like mm -hmm. maybe one or two. So you're going to need to get rid of something like that. Then it just replaces itself afterwards. Mm -hmm. That's sick. Yes. Oh, we got Perception, which gives us plus two to our book for a test, and then, again, replaces itself, mm -hmm. like Guts. Just less good, because we can only use it on the things we're trying to do and not the things we're trying not to die to, mm -hmm. for the most part. Still a very solid inclusion, though. Mm -hmm. um, these cards, uh, I, usually, I usually try to find room for some of them and then abandon it once I decide that the fun things I'm trying to do are too important and then my deck kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you guys think the guy in Guts is Vincent Lee? It looks pretty similar. Honestly, I, you know what I was actually thinking? I was like, I want that investigator. Yeah? Yeah. 
It looks like Vincent Leo with his head tilted forward to me. Also, it's Guts and he's a doctor. Yeah, it's more so the fact that, like, it looks kind of like a mix with, like, Mark get, Harrigan. Yeah, he does like... look, like, a little bit too, like... Cool? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he also has, like, a gun instead of a saw. Yeah. Like, yeah, a real it's just fighter. A, it's just a radical <laughs> surgery option. Yeah, but I do get the Guts. I do, yeah. yeah. Like, that's what it's like. Yeah, like, rotting it. remains? Guts! <laughs> yeah, yeah, he just points. Yeah. Guts! <laughs> Yeah, right. No, I see like uh, you fire up your bone saw and you fail the test and you're like, hey, guts. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be good. All right, we're on to the Scarlet Keys cards, which there are a lot of in this deck. We got Alchemical Distillation. This is a two cost asset. It's customizable, so you can upgrade it. Takes up a hand slot as an action. You can spend a supply, choose an investigator location, and test book one. If you see that investigator performs one of the following options, it starts with draw two gain two but you can also do mending distillate as the first option of the upgrades which heals two damage so without it you can actually only tick six boxes on this correct but with it, you can tick 10 because you can go healing up to five right yep yeah so you can do 10 boxes as soon it. as you put in mending distillate <laughs> uh common is uh heal to horror enlightening is place one charge or secret on an asset you control quickening is move up to two times refined Alchemical Distillation and enters play with two additional supplies on it. Empowered, when you initiate the skill test, you may increase its difficulty by two. If you do, increase the value of the effect granted by each option by one for this test. And then Perfected, if you see by two or more, the chosen investigator can perform two different options instead of one. Um, what do you think of this one, Travis? I think it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Perfected makes it very efficient. Yeah. Uh, you play it, and then you're, you pass your book one test or whatever, and you're like, I get to draw two cards and gain two resources yeah. three times. It's pretty solid. The two additional supplies can be very strong with uh, those options in particular. Um, moving two is pretty nice because you can shunt other people around. It's very, very useful. And the heal two damage and heal two horror options are both like fine, but... You don't super need them, I don't think, unless you really want to put a bunch of experience into this. Um, yeah. I, I think in general, uh, Empowered probably isn't quite worth the 4 experience, yeah. for the most part. Yeah, especially... Unless you're using it as, like, a charge secret battery. Yeah, and especially also because Vincent, like, you have 4 book, but you're not, like... Vincent's in a... a I mean, he can build to be a Kluber, right, as we see from this deck. Mm -hmm. But, like, he also benefits from his stat line using a bit of everything. So, a book three test could be trickier. For, it might not be worth it. I think, yeah, Perfected is really nice. And you just, like, grab the ones you like. And then if you want to grab more than one more tick box, you just grab Mending Distillate, too. Yep. Yeah. We have Grim Memoir. This is a pretty cool three-cost Seeker card. Takes up a hand slot. Uh, four secrets on it. As an action, spend a secret investigate. You get plus two book for this investigation. If you succeed by two or more, you may draw one card. Obviously, drawing a card is nice, but also what Grimoire does is it allows you to investigate at six. And then you're probably going to get the card out of it anyway. Would you call it Grimoire? Yeah, Grimoire. Just put the words together. Grimoire. Uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a... Yeah, this one's just uh, just Vincent's diary, and it's all about the patience that he's, he's cut up, and he's like, yeah. I couldn't figure out how to put him back together again, so I just dumped him in the desert, and I hope no one will find it. It's just his liability insurance yeah. reports. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, jeez. Uh, it turns out you can't just inject adrenaline into people over and over again. <laughs> Um, we got research notes. Uh, after a player card ability places one or more of your clues on your location, place that many resources on research notes as evidence. As an action, you can test book zero. For each point you succeed by, you may spend one evidence to discover one clue at your location. Uh, this card is, as you can see as we get further in, there's going to be a lot of things that we build into that place clues on locations. So you can kind of just take advantage of that. You do have a bunch of options like in this deck that do take up your hand slots. But they also, like, with the Alchemical Distillation and the Grim Memoir, they have secrets. Uh, secrets are supplies. They have uses on them. So you can just kind of rotate between them as you get them. Or just be like, you know what I don't want to do today? Read my book. And then you can throw your book as a book at a book test. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hallowed Chalice is our next one we got here. You, uh, as a three cost, takes up a hand slot, choose an investigate location, you can exhaust it, place one doom on it to heal two damage or two horror from that investigator. Uh, the other option is heal one damage or one horror from that investigator. If you heal the last damage or horror from that investigator, remove one doom from hollowed chalice. Just a way to heal at level zero. 
Yeah, I think this is a real solid uh, card for Vincent with the card pool available to us mm -hmm. just in general. Uh, you probably would glance over it because it's clearly intended for the Doom archetype, especially with and for Amino, especially yeah. with the the charm tag. But she probably wants to spend her actions like actually doing things. Yeah. Well, Vincent uh, can take the time and be like, "Come, come drink from the cup." <laughs> it's uh, it's Robitussin. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, Bizarre Diagnosis is a zero-cost event. Commits for two book, which makes it very nice uh, beyond just the card text. Uh, and which makes it, as Travis once said, playable. Yeah. Uh, place one of your clues in your location, then heal three damage from an investigator or ally at your location. So this is like here to basically just clear out your... Basically turn your weakness into a double action. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but also just like healing three damage is a lot for something that you could turn into positivity with your research notes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Captivating Discovery, one cost event. Search the top six cards of your deck. You may place up to three of your clues on your location. For each clue placed this way, sh uh, choose and add two of the search cards to your hand. Shuffle your deck. It's a powerful card. <laughs> it's a very powerful card. <laughs> what happened to him, Doctor? He fell off a ladder. Well, that's not a very bizarre diagnosis. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, so just like, even like, this card can be place three, draw six, which is nice. But even like at its lowest form, place a clue, get two of six cards is also really good. Yeah, this card should probably be in like all of your Vincent Lee decks with this uh, card pool. Mm -hmm. uh, it performs multiple functions, paying like it can dig out whatever asset you, you want, uh, particularly Dr. Milan to get your book up to the nice comfortable five in, in this version of it, or the alchemical distillations you dumped all your dam all your experience into. Mm -hmm. um, alternatively, it could be uh, if you're playing like a more fighter build, it's very good for being able to dig out a weapon so you can like do your job. Yeah, like finding your bone saw is really yeah. nice. Yeah. And then we got map the area, the card that I forgot that we spoiled. Mm -hmm. It's a one cost event. You can investigate, add your book, your brain, or your foot. So you're gonna add your brain in this in this uh, investigator. So your skill die for this investigation. If you see instead of discovering clues, attach map the area to it to your uh, for your location. Limit one per location. Mm -hmm. Reduce the give difficulty of all skill tests at attached location by one. Okay. I think this card is very good for Vincent, uh, because especially with this build, because there is going to be probably turns throughout the game where your team just wants it's not uncommon to like want to take a turn maybe too even too off to just like kinda hunker down and mm -hmm. heal up and or like get your you know, your soak assets out or whatever. Yeah. And this is very good for that where you can dump on a location, uh your things that care like alchemical distillation that care about you passing tests are easier. The treachery cards you draw are gonna be easier. Any enemies mm -hmm. you might have to draw are easier. Uh just like really helps your entire team get a breeder. What it also does is there is one of the builds that we're gonna talk about later, it has a lot of synergy with that it one does. as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. A lot of quiet synergy. Analysis. <laughs> We got uh, analysis here. It's a practice skill, commits for a while. After revealing chaos token for this skill test, you may place one of your clues on your location, cancel that chaos token, and return a new one to the chaos bag. Return to the chaos bag and then reveal a new one. And then in parentheses, thank goodness, you may do this any number of times. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice, it's a nice practice skill. Have you ever wanted to hold your team hostage into giving you something to commit to a test? No. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> you give me commit your guts to this test or I will put all ten of my clues out in location. You do what you coward. Do. <laughs> <laughs> also, you wanna just, win this game even more than I do. Yeah. Just get your research notes absolutely jacked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you play this to try to pass uh Try to pass a false lead, but you keep drawing the red token, and you're just like, I've put all my clues down. Yeah. <laughs> That'd, be <funny. laughs> That'd be good. All right, Bryn, why don't you talk about these two core set experience cards? Sure, we got the magnifying glass level one. The difference here is that it costs one less to play, which is important because you are allowed to two lightning bolt to pick it up if there are no clues on your location, uh, which is handy if you want to use your hand slots for anything else, like maybe a I don't know, some sort of grimoire, which mm -hmm. I assume is a portmanteau of grim and armoire. Yep. Yep. I suppose this is also a way to hold your teammates hostage. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just, it's just strong. Um, if you're playing any cards that care about the number of cards in your hand, this card is also very powerful because you can use it to just increase that number by one. Pretty close to any time you want. 
Also, cryptic yeah. research shouldn't be here. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we both realize that. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is uh, this card's really good, but you can't play it. Yeah, honestly, so, we're just gonna talk uh, about it. it's a great card. Yeah. Yeah. No, like it is yeah. actually very strong. No investigator in the your Scarlet Keys box can run it. <laughs> Nope. Nope. But yeah, just it's a, it's a it's a cool card. It's, it's a cool a card. card. Yeah. Play anyone yeah. decks that can. Yeah, yeah, it's a good time. We we did well, we I mean like we mostly don't. Yeah, for well I mean um, for a long time we didn't give the respect to deserve, but then I played it in Joe Diamond. Yeah, we missed fingerprint kit too. Oh look at that one, it snuck through. Yeah, no, I mean it's the weird uh it's the Vincent Lee deck building. And the, the card's yellow, oh, yeah. my investigator's yeah, uh, yellow. So Why can't like I play yellow cards? I'll just put I'll just put surgical <laughs> kit over it again. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, the Grey's Anatomy Excellent. is also here for like a strange part of Vincent Lee's deck building, which is apparently cards that sound like they heal horror. Yeah, yeah, or I mean, damage or whatever. Honestly, it makes so, sense to me like, because no, I, I get it. Like it was clearly intended to. It just actually doesn't do that. Yeah, because like I think like it's just like That's all. if it has the text heal damage, it should just yeah. instead of like instead of saying cards that heal damage, it'd say it that cards very... that say heal damage on it, like yeah. actually like you know. Yeah, it is a very. Text. I mean, like yeah, the, the words. On his deck plan, it says, like, cards that heal damage, in quotes. Mm -hmm. And, like, so the reason this card technically can't be played invincibly, but the designers just said yeah, that it could. It modifies the effect. Yeah, it doesn't actually heal anything yeah. on its own. <laughs> it, may, it modifies the healing effect of your other card that's doing the healing. Yes. Yeah. And then it also, like, doesn't have the words heal damage, in quotes, which would yeah. imply that you want that, then you'd have that exact phrase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. But yeah. it doesn't, because there's plus one in there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like it's like it, it, I, I get it. Yeah, it's just yeah. If there was, if there, there was a um, just template your rules better. Yeah. Anyway, we got Nature of the Beast, uh, this red card that you can play. You have to reveal the top three cards of the encounter deck and you choose an investigator, draw one of the cards and discard the rest. You choose an investigator, discover a clue in a location, revealed location. Uh, it's just a nice way to get a free clue, um, give you out potentially. Uh. A monster to one of your teammates, that way they can take damage, you can heal them. I mean, even you, right? You could even just, like, get the monster. Because, yeah. like, if you want to fight, you could be like, I'm going to cut this guy up. Yeah, you can just, like, eat damage with it. Yeah. Uh, you can just eat, uh, you have pretty solid three brain, you can just take a rotting remains or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't take an action. As the way dilemmas work is when you draw them, you have to immediately play them, and then you pick the thing. Unless so. you no longer can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, we have the Grey's Anatomy, the card we were talking about. It's an action. You choose a card at your location, test book one. For each point you succeed by, you choose one. The next time that card will be healed this round, you deal you heal plus one damage and or horror to a maximum of plus three. And the next time that card will be dealt damage, this, or the next time that card will be dealt damage this round, you get plus one damage to a maximum of plus three. So it's like a little bit awkward and that takes up one hand slot. Mm -hmm. Um, which isn't too bad with the healing thing, but a lot of the cards that heal also take up hand slots, so you can kind of only have the one. And then for the fighting builds, it's also pretty solid for, uh, Vincent, I think. Especially since you can, like, use it to trigger an attack of opportunity mm -hmm. to take a, a heart damage for something. And then... And then heal it. Yeah. Be like, punch me right here. You and also you, like, bone saw him back or whatever. Yeah. No, I think so. I think it. I think like it'll shine really well in like a flex one too, where you like you know you you have the time. Like maybe you're not holding the enemy, and you're like, I'm gonna make this really good for you, Mark Harrigan, and I'm also just gonna grab some clues while I'm here. Yep. Yeah. And we have our surgical kit. Uh, this is a two of them. yeah, because it's clearly designed for the doctor. Um, two to play, three experience point in your deck. Commits for two books. Has four supplies as uses, and as a reaction, when your card effects heals damage from an investigator, you spend a supply to either have that effect heal an additional damage, or you get to draw a card and heal horror. Uh, as a double action, you can heal three damage from an investigator or ally asset at your location. Um, this is a great card for Vincent, mm -hmm. especially as you get later into the scenarios where this can be your main healing card, uh, and you can drop like the hollow chalices and potentially alchemical distillations if you aren't uh, upgrading them to free up hand slots uh, for your other things. So you can consistently have your research notes and like a magnifying glass or something like that in play and scale with the shroud values better. Um, yeah, this not take up a slot is pretty big. Mm -hmm. um, double action to heal three is it's a lot of healing. You don't need to do it too often, uh, which is good because the double action cost is pretty inflexible. But yeah, I think though, like when you need it, it's going to be really nice to just have it there. Yep. Yeah. Man, luckily that surgical kit was our uh, last spoiler card we talked about because that fit very well with this video. <laughs> it did. 
Uh, get out of here, surgical kit. Your time is done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got Wheeling T. Mailson. He's working on something bigger. Uh, it's a one cost. Soaks for two and two, which is a lot. And when any investigator draws an encounter card for the encounter deck as a reaction, you can exhaust Dr. William T. Mailson and place one of your clues on your location. That investigator draws another card for the top of the encounter deck, chooses one of the cards to resolve, and cancels the other. That's a really powerful effect. Mm -hmm. Like, the only thing that's, like, close to that is the survivor with the uh, their tarot card. Nine and like rods or whatever. Yeah, and, like, that's, you have to, like, you know... Like the the cost yeah, on this one's wheel. so easy. It's then such a, a good clue down. And it's like not. It's not nothing. It's not yeah. nothing. I think it's a fair balance for what it does, but it's a it's a very good upgrade. And I think it's like, if you're doing the clue putting down deck, definitely consider this one. Like if that's like if you if you're playing your level zero deck and you're like, I like this. I want to do more of it. William T. Nelson. He's he's got something bigger for you. We got uh, Gurish Kadakia. Uh, he is uh, a 3-3 three, three soak, 4 cost, ally asset. He can be assigned damage and or horror dealt to other investigators at your location. As a lightning bolt during a skill test being performed by an investigator location, you can exhaust Gurish. That investigator gets plus 2 skill value for this test. If it is successful, heal 1 damage or horror from him. Very strong. A great ally for Vincent, regardless of what your build is. Yeah, yeah. Just an unexpected courage that also gives you an unexpected courage. <laughs> Let's yep. go. That's sick. That's wild. There's a lot of them there. Yeah, that is that is wild. Like four wild. Four wild. Yeah. 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 So many wild. <laughs> so wow. many wilds. And it's so easy to get damage on them too. Like, so yeah, easy. Yeah. It's really easy to get take damage on this game if you just don't care. Yeah. 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 Can confirm. Yeah. <laughs> it's real easy. We have Orphic Theory. This is a two cost, takes up the spell slot, which, if you've been paying attention, has like no competition in the video thus far. And also, probably for yeah. the rest of it. Yeah, it's because yeah. yeah. Vincent Lee's an actual doctor and yeah. doesn't resort to homeopathy. Yeah. He's not a, yeah, not like Dexter Drake yeah, the magician. No. <laughs> they're like very, very different. They're, do you think they're at the bar? He's like, Do you also saw people in half? And Vincent's like, No. Next, like, mm. yeah. <laughs> So Not how do you purpose. put them back together? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, it's a two-cost spell. Four secrets. Spend a secret. Choose any non-weakness treachery not attached to elite enemy. Until the end of the round, treat that card's printed text box as if it were blank, except for its traits. Uh, this one obviously gets better once you know kind of what you want to use it on, but still, it's, an, uh, it's a card that like you could probably run blind and get benefit out of. Yeah. Yeah. We have Lab Coat, when that's a two cost, takes up the body slot, one experience, soaks for one and one. Uh, when you would fail a skill test on a Seeker card by one or less, exhaust Lab Coat, you succeed by zero instead. So this is specifically uh, looking at like what we have in our deck list right now. Uh, work, uh, sorry, uh, Map the Area and Grim Memoir and Alchemical Distillation are two examples of that. Yep. Yeah. So it's on a specifically a Seeker card, so this would not be like... For example, magnifying glass does not. It's not. You're not doing mm -hmm. a skill test on a seeker card, but grim memoir. You're doing an investigate test on that. Yeah, bone saw is also notably not a seeker. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunate, yeah, so. but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. This basically just gives you plus one to mm -hmm. all of your tests when you're you on those cards that uh, yeah. require you to do those tests. Yeah, definitely. Brent, you talk about these ones. You love yellow okay. cards, and this red card, and this <laughs> sure. neutral card. Sure, we got a press pass. It's a level 2 four-costed asset. <laughs> As a reaction effect, after you spend one or more clues, or place one or more clues on your... Oh, yeah, right, it's this one. Uh, on your location, <laughs> you can exhaust it to take an extra action during the turn, or on your next turn if it is not currently your turn, because it would feel bad if you had to do that. Pretty and it wasn't easy. your turn, so... Yeah, I put a clue down with Dr. T. With a team mail set, and then I, I chose one or two counter cards, but then I just get to take an extra yeah. action. <laughs> 100%, though, that's where we'd be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, it's yeah. so funny. Like, there was another card, and Travis was just like, this is fucking garbage. <laughs> even though he never would, because the card's still great even without it. Yeah, I'd probably anyway. be annoyed by it once, but like, yeah, that's fair, I guess. Yeah, yeah if you want to play with that, those cards that put uh, put clues back down on your location, you probably want to buy this, too. Great yeah. payoff. Yeah. Like, no accessory. Right um, Competition. You know. Then we got Fickle Fortune. This is uh, probably Dexter at the bar asking 
Vincent Lee, how he puts people back together again after he saws them in half. No, th- this is 100% what you see when you walk yeah. into Bryn's madhouse. He's like, I have a neck idea for you. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should just use that as the thumbnail. Yeah, you know what? I'll try to find see if we can, I can get a high-res picture of the art, because that would be great. <laughs> anyway, this one's a dilemma. It's level three. Max two dilemma per round, because it's a dilemma. Revelation, decide. Either place one doom on the current agenda. Each investigator heals three damage and three horror. Or remove one doom from the current agenda, and each investigator takes one direct damage and one direct horror. What we already know about Vincent Lee's, like from his bone saw, is that you want to kill your teammates. <laughs> so like this just gives you one more no, time. I, I, I agree with Bryn. To attempt to kill your teammates while dealing damage to them. Yeah, while well, killing them in the process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like this, this card seems really strong. Man, Fickle Fortune's a um, strong card. I lied in the dark. Actually, though, like not to uh, not to put it in some sort of sarcastic way, this card does seem very powerful. Like if you draw it when there is not a whole lot of doom pressure sometimes three damage and three horror off your team is worth more than the turn yeah it yep. was going to be yeah conversely frequently um taking one damage and one horror on everybody is not the same as taking an extra turn and if you're playing this especially with, if you're not uh, doing yeah, an action yeah. for it yeah right and like if you're like like it's so you just grab this off like captivating discovery it doesn't advance the agenda either so yeah. like if it would advance this yeah. that's just free healing yeah, yeah there's uh there's a lot of times when this card might be very powerful mm-hmm. sometimes also when this card will not be quite so good yeah mm-hmm. but that's just how you know card games are really yeah anyway we got a soul sanctification this one is a level three neutral asset. It's a ritual. It's permanent, which means that it costs you six. Or, I'm sorry, exceptional, which means that it costs you six to buy. Permanents are also Similarly. often ex- exceptional. Yeah. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> Dexter? <laughs> Justin's right here with cards. Yeah. Yeah, just, <laughs> oh, sorry, they're all up. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, for each, every point of damage and or horror, you heal in excess of an investigator's current damage horror. Place one resource on soul sanctification as an offering. This still counts as healing. Super as a, bonus, so. Yeah, as a lightning bolt, you can spend one offering to uh, get plus two skill value for this test. Limit twice per test, which is, I mean, it's good that they only let you get plus four yeah. on a test for not really having to do too much. Because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, even with plus four, your foot's looking pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. This just lets you uh, lets you make use of your healing cards when you don't need them. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and and also then like it's still they get it yeah. on the men. Yeah, they still it still counts as healing. Yeah, it's like you get unexpected like this like was probably added because of this guy. Yeah. Um, yep. Like I think maybe Carolyn, but probably not. We know they don't care about Carolyn. Yeah. No, they don't. You know she got two cards. She's one of the favorites. <laughs> <laughs> this is um this is a cool card like if you're going in on the big healer build mm-hmm. i think it's a very mm-hmm. powerful card for that specific archetype i think yeah. it's cool yeah run this you fire up your uh fire up your what was it the, the gray's anatomy or what? yeah yep like you heal plus three and then use your surgical kit to heal plus th- to heal three plus three and you're heal just six. like six but nobody has six damage on them because they're dead and then you're like but the soul <laughs> sanctification yeah. <laughs> yeah you can also just like draw your fickle fortune real early and just yeah. like slam it for a yeah. doom and like six counters per person on yeah, it just <laughs> let's go <laughs> Excuse me, that would be wild. <laughs> Turn one, you're just like, or one do ahead by have 18 cameras on my soul. It's like, yeah, that's yeah, literally, <laughs> that's literally pass every like test that you need to pass for the remainder of the game. Yeah, that's wild. Right. Probably. I mean, like that's that's. Yeah. I don't think that's too powerful. I think that's like like a specific set of like, circumstances. Yeah, I mean, it already costs us nine XP to get yeah. to the point where we have one fickle fortune. Yeah. But but I like what it does is it gives but, more power yeah. to healing. In a, in a way that I think is also completely fair because it's just unexpected courage. I'm just yeah, excited yeah. for the game where Travis is like, fire up this earthly serenity. Yeah. Like, pass to remove all the all the counters. Like, no, Justin, you can't have any. Healing. I need six points. <laughs> I so mean, sick. we have two turns left in the game. You're fighting an enemy that you can't kill this round. <laughs> I need six. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, just uh, and just to let you know, uh, because time is a flat circle, and you've heard this many times before, mm-hmm. someone has already shared to me a Jim Culver deck that I'm calling Jim Solver. 
and <laughs> it's there to support you as a healer and get some clues when I can, but I'm very excited to heal you and then maybe pass a test or two. Maybe pass a test Is or two. Is this like Akachi or something? No, Jim Jim Solver. <laughs> it's not it's not Akachi, the soul maiden. Although that sounds pretty sick. But no, sorry. Like sorry, Travis. Just... Sorry, it's Jim. Sorry, it's Jim. I'm tired of playing with Jim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't get to come off Mr. Uh, Jim's wild ride until I tell you you can. All right, uh, Travis, why don't you talk about what we're going to be doing next? Uh, this is Kill Things Vincent. So, it's you like get, surgery, but different. Yeah, it's like surgery, but not with the goal of fixing them. Mm -hmm. The opposite. You're breaking them. Um, so you get to play up to 15 red and or blue cards in your deck um, and because you're three punch and your ability to get unexpected courage is relatively consistently there's like a real option to fight stuff with Vincent so here we have a bunch of red, blue cards from Corset if no one else is using them uh, we got Machete and 45 on Max which both just kind of give you plus one punch and deal extra damage the Machete does it conditionally and the, four, the on Mac does it four times um, just solid weapons for you to start with if you don't have your bow and saw. We got our Vicious Blows, which uh, they're like uh, deduction, but for damage. <laughs> um, but pretty good for killing enemies. We got our good friend Beat Cop, who would be your replacement for Dr. Milan. Where he bumps you up to four punch, which is not a super good number, but it's like a start. Yeah. You know, you gotta work somewhere. And it's Lightning Bolt, you can just deal one to an enemy at your location. And, and then even though, like, the four is not a great number, you have to keep in mind with instantly, you need to think, like, two steps ahead. And one of those steps is heal and get an on the mend. And then the second <laughs> step is commit on the mend. Yeah. <laughs> and it yeah. becomes more doable. Yeah. Why don't you keep uh, this one going? Yeah, sure. We got Guard Dog. Guard Dog's a great card for Vincent Lee, where it has a nice health pool for you to heal with your cards. Uh, and it does Tesla's damage. You get to kind of work around your lowish punch a little bit. And we have Overpower, which is another card that you were almost something I want to include in this archetype because it you know it's two extra fists is better than not two fists uh if you don't have an on the men you can pretend this is an on the men except it's better mm -hmm. or if you need two on the men's yeah 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 when we have veterinarian vincent lee as a deck just mm -hmm. heals animals it's okay little puppy your little oh, did you hurt your paw oh no black yeah. cat just like standing healing a black cat oh, my God. <laughs> yeah um Going more into the, the fighting stuff here as we continue this, we have Pocket Multi-Tool. So you can uh, exhaust it to get plus one to a skill value. If you use this on the sharpened knife mode, you get plus one skill value during an attack, which means you get an attack at five without mm -hmm. even having another weapon. Uh, with Bone Saw, that means you attack at seven, which is a really comfortable number. Yeah, that's a good place to be. Uh, you uh, the, the plus out of Pocket Multi-Tool, though, is that you also can, for example, grab, like, I don't know, magnifying lens, and mm -hmm. then use that to also investigate when you don't have to kill an enemy as well. Yeah, you can also use Spring Load to pretty good effect here, where yeah. you can... Uh... No, you can't. No. No, too hard. No, you can't. Yep. Yeah, you have you only get one upgrade. You only get like Unless you you two boxes. You get two boxes. Prior, prior. Prior. Yeah. In which case, why? Yeah. yeah. Uh, end of the road. It's uh, this is a very powerful card. Uh, I actually played with it mm -hmm. this week, and it's, it's really impressive. Good. Uh, because it does nothing for like the majority of the game, and then you're like, I'll just take two extra actions this turn. Yeah, it's like, like an extra turn. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's just, you can only play it if the final agenda's in play, you draw a card, gain a resource, gain one additional action, and then you remove it from the game. It's super simple, it's, it's very good. Uh, and it's like, this is like, even though it wasn't in the other deck, this could be in like any Vincent deck very comfortably. Yeah, both the pocket multi-tool and the end of the road could fit very comfortably into the, uh, the investigating healing support deck that mm -hmm. we showed at the start. Um, I chose not to include them because the pocket multi-tool in particular because there's already two other investigators I had done guides for that were playing it and then the figure people want to play these together so yeah um, and then also a lot of hand slots too already. yeah there's a lot of hand slots for that yeah. one end of the road I just I don't know I mean you did talk about it just here yeah yeah they uh, just put it in your deck yeah, yeah, yeah there's not much to say about it. the really cards just really good 
Really good. We got Predator or Prey. It's a, one of the dilemmas. If there are no enemies in play, you draw one card. Let's go. Otherwise, you must decide. Each unengaged enemy moves once toward the nearest investigator. Each investigator disengages from each enemy, engage with them, and moves once away from the nearest enemy. So this is really nice in the combat, Vincent, because it allows you to be like, I'm going to fight this guy. Like, I think both modes are really nice. It's either I'm going to fight this guy or like I am overwhelmed. I need to heal and get some on the men's and then fight this guy. Mm -hmm. I think both modes are really nice for Vincent. Yeah, it's pretty pretty handy. Yeah. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of words. <laughs> Friend, why don't you take these ones? <laughs> You haven't talked to them oh, all. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. That is a runic <laughs> axe, which is like a surgery tool, only Nordic. Big. <laughs> uh, it is customizable. It has uses for charges, and uh, you replenish one of the charges at the start of each round because it's a magic axe, mm -hmm. uh, which is presumably how but he not really. cuts people in half and then tries to put them back together again. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Mm. As an action you fight, you get plus one fist for the attack. Before the attack, you may spend any number of charges to imbue the axe with that many different inscriptions. Uh, the inscriptions we got are accuracy, where we get plus two fist for the attack, which is very important because, uh, you know, three punch. Mm -hmm. You need to be better than that. And power, which is one more damage, which again, also very important because uh, enemies usually have more than one health. Mm -hmm. Then you can uh, customize it with all kinds of other things, yeah. like heirloom. It costs one less and is a relic. Just a powerful, like it's Cost being a relic money. is good. Costing less money is good. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. good for like one XP. Yeah, because you can actually your do copies. Uh, with mm -hmm. if it's an heirloom, you can work it with uh, Doctor Ellie, the <laughs> Doctor <laughs> Squad, Doctor yeah. Kill Squad. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, we can have the inscription of glory, which adds the inscription glory. If the attack defeats an enemy, choose. One, draw a card, heal a damage, or heal one horror. If you choose this one, you then can choose up to ten yeah, other it's boxes. It's, it's very important which to is, choose this yeah, one. Like, it's all, I mean, probably like, for, kind of a big deal. It's really good for one experience. Yeah. Yes. Like, um, really good. You spend your on the men to, like, kill a guy, and yeah. then you just heal damage and get it back. You're like, yeah, Let's go. I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, that is kind of sick. Actually, one thing that's really nice with Vincent with Rune and Axe is that, like, if an enemy has, for example, three health, <laughs> you could do your first attack with the runic axe at plus two, but not do the plus one damage, mm -hmm. and then do the next one with the on the mend committed and do the plus one damage instead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's very nice. Yeah, I mean, like, you can you can just take both, uh, but it does cost you two Char charges. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so spending one charge each for that. them, yeah. Uh, we've got Inscription of the Elders. It adds the inscription, Elders. Uh, put it in a home? <laughs> That's strange. <laughs> oh no. If the attack succeeds by. Come on, Carson. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> I have to help Mr. Peabody. <laughs> um, if the attack succeeds, succeeds by an amount equal to or greater than your location's shroud, discover a clue at your location. Probably not going to happen too much, but, you know, you know like it, on the mend is 2 plus 2, so. Mm -hmm. You could probably manage to make that happen if that's what you want. Uh, inscription of the hunt adds this inscription hunt immediately move to a connecting location or engage an enemy at your location uh, that's like kind of a weird one because not really sure how the rules work we, we're trying to fight we, a guy we figured it out we figured it out yeah. yeah it does work yeah because so yeah what happened was in the video where charlie came where we talked about this uh, a commenter pointed out to me anyway that it, it works like duke mm -hmm. and then i read both cards like 12 oh, times yeah, okay. and i was like what are you talking about runic axe doesn't say before and then they're like uh on the card it says before and then i read it yeah, and i yeah. i swear i had okay. like a a moment <laughs> where i was like i stepped through a wormhole but no it was 100 percent true yeah, so get yeah you, get you a berenstain bears moment yes yeah so yeah, i mean like there was it wasn't like the point of tension was whether i knew it did before but it was yeah. a question of whether you can trade like Use start, a fight action yeah you can use a fight yeah. action when there's no one at your location because duke you're always at a location you can investigate yeah yeah, that's uh, fair. There's, that's fair. I looked it up. There's actually like one location in the game that can't be investigated. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's one of the train cars. Those those damn train cars. I know the one. Yeah. 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 And then we got the inscription of fury. Adds the inscription fury. If this attack is successful, in addition to its standard damage, deal one damage to each other enemy engaged with you. You swing the axe sideways uh, yeah, instead yeah, of overhand. Right? Like if Whoa. if you're gonna want that one, you'll probably know pretty quick. Yeah that uh, this is a 
campaign with swarming enemies. Mm -hmm. I mean, even like uh, if like if you don't need to spend your stuff on other things, and you're just like, I'm yeah. gonna like kill a lot of things. Like, there's gonna be like if you're playing four player, the value on that one also just goes up. This is How true. sick with this being like Zoe when it's like taunt a bunch of enemies, and you're just like, ah. Yeah, that does seem <laughs> sick. That does seem good. Uh, three boxes gives you ancient power, which is you may imbue the same inscription up to three times, which. Uh, wow. Like, that could be a lot of damage, especially with, like, Fury or, you know, the damage one on the card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, deal three damage to each enemy engaged with you is, like, a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. And if you're playing at a higher player count, that might be really cool. You'll also have to take Glory because uh, you have to. Yep. Yeah. Uh, in order to get <laughs> more than two boxes. Yep. Uh, we got Saga, which is replenished two of the Runic Axe's charges at the start of each round instead of only one, which, you know, this is also very good. Yeah, what, th what this does is it basically just turns it into, like, yeah. a regular weapon that you can just, like, reliably use <laughs> to kill with. Because, you know. Yeah. And then lastly, for four boxes, we've got Script Weaver. And for each charge spent, you may imbue the axe with up to two different inscriptions, that which nice. is, like, really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is it good? I mean, like, I think so. Double efficiency. I think it's good. So, I th so like, it's very similar to Saga. Yeah. And then you get to use two of the abilities each time. Um, Just, like, more efficient, I think. Yeah. With Script Weaver or Saga? Script Weaver. Because Saga oh, yeah. just gives you an extra one every turn, but <laughs> Script Weaver says that every time that you spend one, it's two. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that you. Most of the time, you're about the script weaver, but you, if you're taking ancient power, it would be the situation that you want. Saga. Yeah. I mean, like if this if this is your primary tool to play the game with, you could sink a whole lot of XP into this and be pretty happy with it. I think. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Easy I mean, ten. You could like yeah. take a ten experience at ancient power. Oh, you have to take the inscription glory. Damn. Yeah, you can't you can't get ancient power saga and script weaver. You don't know people. Because like, <laughs> we're a doctor and not a magic Viking unless we. Are, are obsessed with glory in which case we become a magic viking yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean like even just taking like freaking um heirloom and like inscription of glory heirloom inscription of glory and then like even just yeah like taking saga and script weaver like That's pretty good. yeah That's you can you can do a lot of stuff with this card mm -hmm. yeah um yeah, it's a sick card uh, you, even then you can take one of the other inscriptions too for a little bit of added utility if yeah this yeah. is like this is the card you're using to play the game, which since it takes up both your hands, because, you know, it's an axe. Um, and if you're playing this card, it is probably the main way you're looking to play the game. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Then we got the Hunter's Armor, which uh, is equally brief. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot less to talk about on this card. For four costs. You can't even take two of the things. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, it takes up your body slot. And you, it soaks 2-2. Two, two. No other effects, Your Honor. But wait, it's customizable. So we can add a bunch of other effects to it. And by a bunch, I mean two boxes one. worth. One extra effect to it. Yeah. So we can add one extra effect to it. So this is, uh, you know, like we can have enchanted armor. It can take up, uh, take up an arcane slot. Uh, it also gains the relic trait, but I don't think that matters yet. Yeah. Yeah. On... Uh, Things that are not weapons, really. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you're trying to like Doctor Ellie stuff out of your deck, yeah. In which case, you know, if you, you purchase you. it enchanted, you can play it in Ursula. This is the truth. <laughs> um, protective. <laughs> for two, we get protective runes. It may be assigned damage and/or horror dealt to other investigators to your location. If that's what you're looking for, you're probably better off just like saving points for. Uh, you know, Gersh. Gersh. Yeah, because yeah. he's real good for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you do you. We get Durable, which is plus two health. Mm -hmm. That's the one that other people care about, but we got, you got nine. Yeah. So, no worries there. Uh, plus two Sanity, which only six, so possible worries there. Yeah. Uh, and then the Lightweight, which makes it cost one less, and playing it does not provoke attacks of opportunity, which I think is the real interesting one here where you can play it while engaged with enemies who you're worried about killing you mm -hmm. yeah. and then just have it soak some of the damage and you yeah. know, probably die yeah I think well, yeah, Lightweight and Hallowed are like the two that are 
The yeah, durable is also an option if you like you are flying a little too close to the sun with your just heart damage. Turn, your you're just like stuff. cutting your stomach open. <laughs> just, like, I'll find the gold coin <laughs> one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. There's not too much talk about this. No, it's uh, like it's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, not so cool because you know he's a doctor. Mm -hmm. Can't wear armor. Yeah, you it's can't. Like, it's like playing Dungeons and Dragons, right? If you're a doctor, you you don't have heavy armor proficiency. So. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know, whatever. Uh, last one here is we got fighting lessons because uh, you're going to be fighting. Commit only to a skill test or an attack or evasion attempt. You commit this to skill test, do it, inve and investigators test at any location. It's probably going to be you if you're going to be the goon. Yep. Yep. All right. Travis, this one's nice and simple. Scavenging. Yeah, so like a couple of red cards you can play. There's a nice little scavenging package where you can use baseball bat as like your primary weapon and then use scavenging to get it back with your mm -hmm. book options when it inevitably breaks. And then Rabbit's Foot is like... You're probably going to fail a handful of tests because you're, you're going to fail the odd brain test or the odd fight yeah. test or the odd evasion or foot test or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's just a nice way to get cards out of that, and also something else that you can use the scavenging for when your baseball bat is functional. Yeah, yeah, exactly, because you can commit it for a while and then just get it back in the future. Yep. Yeah. It's a nice little survivor-centric package you could play. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, and the last little package we're looking... Nope, sorry, just kidding. It's this is also part of this. It's flashlight. Yeah, you can play flashlight here instantly, Duck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's part of the scavenging thing. So... Yes, it's also true. Uh, no, sorry, this is part of the Succeed by Zero archetype. We're already there. Oh. Yeah, this is part of the Succeed. I was like, why wasn't this not on the other one? I got it, though. Nice. Yeah, so this is on the Succeed by Zero. Not the Succeed by Zero, the Test a Zero location Well, testing archetype. zero in general. Testing zero. Uh, so, uh, the whole goal of this one is to reduce things, whether it be a uh, uh, punch. You probably should have put the cards I care about at first. You mean these ones? One of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I just I just went with the order that was weird, and I did not think I had. Oh no. Uh, so with this one, it's uh, the one we can see right at the end. There is shed a light. This is the example of it. So the whole point of this archetype and thing that you can build with uh, Vincent here is that you want to test at zero, whether this be uh, investigating or as a card we're going to see in the future, fighting or evading. And they benefit you when you do that. So shed a light. You uh, if you're succeeding in it. Uh, an investigation where the shroud is currently zero. Don't reveal a chaos token. Instead, discover a clue. Discover the clue. Discover additional clue. And discover a clue at any location, which can also be your own location. Mm -hmm. uh, very powerful card, and building around it can lead to very great things. And we have some stuff here that helps you do that uh, in other ways as well. Uh, flashlight, the upgraded version, is now just when you are investigating. It's not just an investigate on it, so you can use it with other tools like that Grim Memoir that we had into the deck. And also use it for evading, which doesn't really matter uh, for the majority of the time, but once we see the Exploit Weakness card as we come up to it, it'll be... You can see the value for it there. Yeah. Gumption, just uh, you can make any type of skill test, It's a, and you can just... That test gets minus two difficulty, which is what you're going to want to be doing. Mm -hmm. Breach the door is uh, Travis being a little bit cheeky, and I really, I really like what are you it. We're talking about this card plays really well with map the area. Can't, I know can't uh, fail the test really, <laughs> but uh, so it works really well with the the shed a light because it's test fist one. If you succeed, attach breach the door for uh, to your location with one resource on it for each point you succeeded by as leads, and reduce the attached location shroud by one for each lead on the breach door. <laughs> so another tool to work with shed a light. And I just I just love the idea of this and Vincent Lee like he shows up and he's like doctors without doors yeah <laughs> like kicking the door in like let's see those hands those are some nice hands I'm gonna take them off and put them on this guy <laughs> yeah. no this is actually I, I think this card's really nice for a lot of uh, guardian investigators who are trying to flex um, where you can like dump it on a location if you don't have any enemies for like the investigators who are particularly good at fighting you're more likely to succeed the test and potentially get the shred down shred down to zero. So like you're playing Mark Harrigan, and you test book or fist five and you you, know, you, you succeed by five or yeah. four or whatever, uh, and you, the, the location is having shroud and you don't care about having to book because yeah, yeah, no, you definitely. just get clues. And I mean in this archetype, well, like this deck that we're talking about here, it's even better because even though your fist isn't high and you might only succeed by two. Yeah, but your book's higher, so you don't need to be lower. And but the thing is also no, I'm talking about like this one here because then like your flashlight now immediately can then oh, turn yeah, yeah. it into zero, right? Like even if you only pass by two, mm -hmm. and it's like a one shroud location, you're like perfect. This works with that map the area we had earlier. Yep. This works with flashlight. It works with gumption, and then your shed of light is active. Uh, and then this obviously this gets better. Like shed of light, you have to kind of like build around it to really see its true ultimate power. 
and that's where like resourceful and scrounge for supplies which we don't have but like you're gonna like it's uh, shadow light's gonna do things but it could do even more makeshift trap talk about exploit weakness first <laughs> yeah uh exploit weakness here this, this is the other one where it's like if you are uh fighting uh, fighting or evading an enemy whose difficulty level is like the test difficulty is zero you instead of its normal effects it automatically seeds you discard the attack or evaded enemy and if it's elite you automatically evade it and deal three damage uh so it's like the uh, shadow light but for fighting and evading uh, it's a very powerful effect if you can get it going and makeshift trap i'm only going to talk about like the thing that like matters for it with this archetype we have here yeah so uh each not elite enemy in attached location gets minus one fight and minus one evade that's on the printed card so you attach to your location and then each non elite mm -hmm. enemy in attached location gets minus one fight and minus one evade at the end of the round you get to remove one time from it uh this is actually i think there's a lot of potential here to even further because there is um in vincent lee's pool outside of this i think this is a very fun vincent deck that we sh one of us probably me well, should try out because you can play the anatomical diagrams, yeah. which also reduces an enemy's uh, fight and evade value. And you can like, you can have a really scrappy doctor deck, and I think it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. That's it, Vincent good, Lee. Good video. The doctor is out. Uh, Vincent Lee just ended the video after that. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor's out. Uh, Vincent Lee is a great investigator. Uh, there's a lot of potential builds you can do. He becomes even more wild once you have a full collection. One day we'll have an expanded guy, but I think the best thing to do with Vincent Lee is just if you get a fun idea that's in his pool, try it out. Yeah. 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 Uh, thanks for supporting the channel. Uh, for everyone who is on our Patreon, if you want to support the channel, you can join our Patreon link down below. If you're watching and you have not subscribed, consider subscribing to our channel. And then also leave a comment, because as Travis said, and I can confirm, it makes you better at Arkham. It lets you win more if you live, leave a comment. Yep. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great one. And as always, a GG's.